students welcome to lecture number 26 today in this uh, lecture series of design of compression members we will be going to design a rcc circular column with a spiral type of a transverse reinforcement now let first of all uh, analyze what is the statement given that means for which uh, which type of column we have to design and what information is available in the problem statement itself so we have to design an rcc circular type of column and uh, which is subjected to an axial load of 1800 kilonewton effective length of column is directly given that is 4 meter grade of concrete is m25 and uh, grade of steel we have to take 415 and we have to assume moderate type of uh, environment Moreover, it is given that we have to design the column in such a way that a transverse reinforcement will be of a spiral type or we can say helical type of reinforcement we have to provide. Now, uh, let us first of all uh, collect the information which is uh, available in the statement itself. That means what is grade of concrete, what is grade of steel, etc. So first of all, uh, as it is given in the statement that effective length of the column is 4, me 4 meters. So that means uh, now it is uh, unsupported length is not given, directly effective height is given. So we directly take this value and, uh, and the conditions. So you can uh, see in the statement and the condition are not specified. Directly it is given that it is having effective height of 4 meters. So directly it is given, so we need not to do further other type of calculation. And uh, spiral type of uh, transverse reinforcement need to be designed. The column is supposed to be having moderate environmental exposure. So type of exposure or weather in weather of the surrounding where we are going to construct the column it is clearly mentioned in the statement. So based on the information available and uh, based on the requirement we have selected that grade of concrete will be M25 and uh, grade of steel will be taken as FE 450. And as per IS456 guidelines recommendations, even in the earlier uh, numerical problems we have taken, so again we are uh, taking nominal cover for the reinforcement purpose, we are taking it 40 millimeters now in step number two let us decide what should be the size of the column so how to determine and how to do the calculation related to size of the column and uh, first of all uh, since actual load is given that is 1800 kilonewton now here you have to clearly understand first of all that in the problem statement it is given that actual load 1800 kilonewton so in statement this is the pure actual load which is coming on the section and uh, no information is available whether uh, regarding the self weight of the column so we have to assume some self weight so we can assume let us assume 1.5 percent of the self weight of the column so that means what is the load on the column it is coming so 1.5 percent of that load we are just assuming it as the self weight of the column so based on that we can work out that self weight of the column comes out to be when we take 1.5 percent so it comes out to be 27 kilonewton so when we have to calculate the factor load then we have to multiply it with partial safety factor that is 1.5 and uh, total load will be 1800 kilonewton that is the axial load plus 27 is the self weight of the column so it comes out to be 1827 so when you multiply it with partial safety factor then you will get the total factor load and this factor load is required for which we are going to design the section of the column as well as reinforcement so ultimate load or you can say factored uh, total factor load comes out to be 2742 kN approximately now uh, since no information again is available regarding the longitudinal reinforcement so based on the information based on the loading criteria since load is a very moderate type of loading 
so not a heavier type of loading so what we have decided we will be just assuming that uh, area of uh, longitudinal steel that is steel under compression we can take it two percent of the gross sectional area now um, based on the calculation that uh, asc will be equal to two percent of the gross area of the section and the gross area is composed of that is area of the concrete plus area of the steel so area of concrete mean gross area of the section minus area of the steel which we are going to provide so based on this calculation we are getting that area of concrete will be equal to 98 percent of ag so that means ac you can calculate by multiplying area of a gross section of the column into 0.9 now as a trial we are going to use this equation so that we can find out what is the estimated what is the required area of steel as a longitudinal reinforcement we need to provide so later on uh, you know that is456 recommend to use of this formula if it is a short column but currently we are not aware whether it is a short column or a long column so this is one of our assumption that let us uh, assume that column is a short column and accordingly we will be using this formula and uh, later on we will be applying the check that whether it is a short column if it is a short column then okay we can proceed with the design and uh, if it comes out to be a long column then we need to revise the section so putting the information whatever we have collected that P U is equal to 274 to the so multiplied by thousand and uh, that will be equal to 0.4 into let me uh, remove this uh, so that you can be clear so 0.4 and uh, FCK comes out to be 25 because the area of concrete we have chosen that is M25 and the uh, area of concrete we can uh, pick from this value that is 0.98 ag and uh, this is a 0 0.67 0 0.67 is the factor and uh, fy is 415 and uh, area of uh, steel longitudinal steel is we have assumed that it is 0 0.02 percent 0 0.02 of ag that means two percent of the cross section area so by putting the, all the information here which we have collected so far so based on that we can easily work out that what is the gross area required gross area of the section required to take care of this much loading and uh, based on the uh, assumption of the steel that means two percent of steel so because we have to design it as a circular column so accordingly we can decide we can work out what should be the diameter of the circular column uh, which can give at least this much area of a gross section so by using the formula that is pi by 4 d square like that so we are getting the diameter of the circular column required is 476.85 so let us round off it uh, is to the 500 so diameter of the column decided is 500 so based on if we adopt the diameter of a column as 500 millimeter then accordingly we can uh, just calculate what is the gross area we are providing uh, by using column of 500 millimeter diameter so this area comes out to be so that is the gross area provided and uh, based on this 500 we are able to work out that this much is the gross area which we are able to provide or you can say the column having the uh, diameter that is circular column having diameter 500 millimeter it will be giving you this much area of a gross area of the section now let us uh, first of all uh, check here whether the column is a short column or whether column is a long column which we are designing so since the effective length of column is already given that is uh, 4 meter and uh, first of all we have to find out the cylinderness ratio so cylinderness ratio is always uh, the ratio of uh, effective length of the column divided by least lateral dimension since it is a circular type of column so only one dimension that we can use the diameter of the section so diameter is we have selected is 500 and the column height is 4 so it comes out to be 8 which is lesser than 12 now based on this condition which is mentioned in the IS 456 we have decided 
that this column need to be designed as a short column so it has been classified as a short column so uh, as the formula which we have used to calculate the area of a steel required or area of a cross section required so that formula is still valid because it is a short column so no need to go for the other uh, type of calculation now step number four here we have to apply the check for the minimum eccentricity because uh, you know that any column we need to design um, with the having minimum eccentricity of 20 millimeter now e minimum that mean a minimum eccentricity can be worked out by this formula which is again we have taken from is 456 so based on the calculation we are able to get it is 24.66 which is a uh, greater than a minimum eccentricity as recommended by board so it's okay at this step now another check which uh, code is suggesting regarding the eccentricity so that is 0 0.05 times the dimension so 0 0.05 times it comes to be 25 so that means e minimum which uh, uh, we are getting from the section that is 24.66 and it is less than the maximum limit given by the code that is 25 so we can say that column is a short column and uh, that formula which we have earlier used that is also applicable so in other sense we can say this column is uh, uh, following the guideline of minimum eccentricity of the code that is IS456 now in next step step number five we have to decide we have to do the calculation for longitudinal reinforcement that means how much longitudinal reinforcement is required to take care of all the loads so now here another important and interesting aspect is that if you refer clause number 39.4 then that clause uh, says that if you have to design a circular column as a helical column that means transverse reinforcement is helical type so is a spiral column then as per this clause the strength of the column can be taken as 1.05 times the similar type of column with the little type so here it is the concluded that if uh, you are designing a spiral column and definitely spiral column we have some higher uh, load carrying capacity so that's why we are multiplying it with 1.05 and uh, now using the formula which we have already used we are doing only we are multiplying it with by 1.05 so this is the load carrying capacity of the column and uh, this much is the load coming on the column so uh, let me remove to make it more clear now this much load uh, we have already calculated and 1.05.4 fcg 25 area of concrete now area of concrete is gross area of the section minus area of the steel which we have provided and plus 0 0.67 415 is fy and asc so based on this formula we can easily calculate what is the area of steel required so area of steel required comes out to be asc comes out to be 5998 millimeter square so accordingly we have to decide with a trial uh, you can do various type of trial so with the uh, various type of trials we have to decide that what should be the diameter of the steel bar which we are going to provide so here we have because since we are going to design a circular column so accordingly following the codal guideline that mean minimum number of bars we need to provide is six so we can go beyond six also so another thing uh, first of all uh, uh, of going to decide the what is the diameter but the number of bars first of all again we have to apply the check and uh, this check is for the minimum area of steel and it comes out to be 1571 and the maximum area of steel which we can provide so it is 11781 so you can say that this uh, uh, this area which we are going to decide it follows both the guidelines carefully so it is uh, greater than the minimum value and lesser than the maximum value so we can proceed with the design so that way we have mentioned here that it uh, follows the limit supplemented by is456 so we can provide the steel so accordingly uh, after going through the trials i had decided that it will be easy or it will be comfortable to provide eight number of bars 
so eight number of bars of 32 mm dia if we provide then uh, uniformly we can provide uh, along the circumference of the column and uh, with a clear cover that is 40 mm which we have already decided to the outer of the spiral and uh, from the face of the column so that means this will be the minimum cover uh, because when you are going to provide the longitudinal bar that longitudinal bars will be uh, covered by or uh, you can say confined by uh, circular type of uh, that type of spirals so from this spiral uh, outside of the spiral and uh, distance between the column inside of the column that is the clear cover and that we have taken 40 millimeter so accordingly when we provide eight number of bars of 32 mm dia then uh, area of uh, steel provided comes out to be 6430 so that means uh, you can compare uh, this value with the value which was required so these two, two values you can compare so what we are going to provide we are providing area of steel uh, slightly greater than which is required and lesser than the upper limit of the code which is code is suggesting now another very important part of the design how this design of a circle column with helical reinforcement is different from a rectangular or circular column having little ties either in the form of a rectangle or in the form of a, a rings circular rings so they need to be designed in a similar way but here we are providing transverse reinforcement in the form of a spiral so, so spiral mean it is a continuous type of uh, covering or continuous type of reinforcement. So here what we have to do, we have to follow the guideline mentioned in clause number 39.4. So I suggest to you all that you should go through the codal guideline in clause number 39.4 very carefully so that you can understand the mechanism. So first of all, we have to calculate the core diameter. Now what is the core diameter? and uh, let me explain it core diameter so core diameter how to calculate so first of all let us assume 6 mm dia spiral reinforcement that means uh, the helical reinforcement is of it having 6 mm dia and uh, p is the pitch of the helical reinforcement now here we have to understand that what is the meaning of pitch so let us uh, understand it more clearly because why we are doing all this calculation based on IS456, we have to find out this ratio. That is rho s, we can say ratio of the volume of the spiral reinforcement to the volume. Now it is the volume of the spiral reinforcement to the volume of the core per unit length of the column. So this need to be calculated. And uh, now we can understand this more clearly. Here you can uh, understand that uh, let me take okay. Now, this outer side is the basically 500 <laughs> millimeter that is the gross area of the circular type of a column. Now, you can see here these black color bars which we have provided, eight number of bars which we have provided. These are the main reinforcement, or you can say it is the longitudinal reinforcement vertical type of bars. And these bars are surrounded by a helix or a spiral. This red color you can see, this is a wire which can uh, uh, just confine these bars very closely so that these uh, main reinforcement must be touching this bar, wire. Now, if you see here, uh, focus on this point. So here you can see the outer side of the ring that is spiral and uh, uh, inner side of the circular column and uh, this will be the clear cover and that we have taken 40 millimeter now what about the core diameter so core diameter uh, more clearly we can say this core diameter will be the inside of the core of the column that is inside of the spiral so that's why what we have taken 500 500 minus 40 along this side and 40 along other side so it comes out to be 420 millimeter so that means this much uh, this much diameter will be the core diameter now next point we have to understand the pitch now what is pitch basically uh, so pitch one pitch uh, uh, 
will be the distance in the vertical direction here uh, instead of s you can use p also one which will be the distance in vertical direction of the column in which spiral will complete its one cycle now understand it more clearly you can understand it here now you can see these are the bars and these bars are surrounded by a helix that is a continuous form of a helix it is a continuous so what will be the uh, pitch we, first of all we have to understand what is the pitch and uh, now you see here uh, here you can easily understand that uh, i have started from this point that is the uh, if you say this is uh, the center of the column and uh, here one ring of the spiral will start and ultimately it is reaching here so that means it is completing a one circle maybe in the form of helix so if it was not a helix then it, it could have formed a circle so what we have to take we have to consider that one pitch will be the distance in the vertical direction in the column in which spiral will complete one cycle so now this uh, spiral has completed one cycle and uh, another diagram general diagram we will be showing as a section so this is the side diagram and this is a uh, sketch or you can say sectional diagram now you can see here the this uh, reinforcement uh, in this direction we have shown a dark line and uh, this one is uh, shaded line so shaded line that means it is behind uh, the reinforcement which is not clearly visible so it is the front side of the so this is the way how to do the drawings now you see here uh, you can compare uh, these uh, uh, these two diagram carefully okay, so these diagram you can carefully uh, compare so now here we have uh, this is the closing of the circle or cycle this is the starting of cycle so it is completing one cycle so that's why we have taken this distance between these two points and uh, these two points when you join so then it will be forming a pitch so that is the definition of the pitch that what is pitch pitch is the distance between in the vertical direction of the column in which a spiral will complete its one cycle so fr from these two diagram you can easily understand that what is the meaning of pitch and what is the meaning of spiral so this much distance this vertical distance is known as pitch of the spiral so you can easily uh, just uh, calculate here that this is the pitch so this is pitch now calculate how to calculate the because we have to calculate the ratio here so first of all we have to calculate the volume of the spiral per unit length of the column now you can understand here uh, we if we calculate the volume of this one spiral this one spiral may be covering some uh, height of the column maybe in millimeter and if you divide it by that height suppose it is 5 centimeter or 5 millimeter you divide it by 5 millimeter then you will get the volume of the spiral of the reinforcement per unit length of the column because you are dividing that length of the column in which one spiral is getting completed so here you have to understand this formula that how to calculate the volume that mean if you just uh, uh, clearly if you if you open the this ring so this ring may form like this much is the distance of the one ring if you just uh, unwrap this so this is the length of the spiral per pitch so this will be length of spiral per pitch and what is the uh, cross section because you have to find out the volume of the one spiral so cross section area of the spiral bar and it divided by pitch length why because we have to calculate uh, this volume per unit length of the column so that means we have to divide it by pitch length and uh, similarly you can calculate volume of the core volume of the core per unit length for that you can simply use the formula pi d square by 4 here d will be the core diameter now in uh, step number 6 in continuation to step number 6 here we will be doing the same calculation core diameter we have calculated already 420 
and let us calculate uh, numerically what is the volume of the spiral per unit length so this was the formula which we have discussed in the previous case slide and by putting all the information now when you have to find the length of the spiral then uh, you can easily use this uh, value that means this will be the cross section area pi d square by 4 that is the uh, better to write in other way this is the cross section area of the spiral and this will be the length of the spiral divided by per pitch that is pitch length is p so you get this value 3726 pi square by p and the similarly we can calculate the volume of the core per unit length of the column that is pi core diameter square by 4 so it comes out to be 441005 and uh, what we have to do we have to calculate the ratio so this ratio when you divide uh, th these two then you will get a uh, ratio of the volume of the spiral per unit length of column to the volume of the core per unit length of column that is 0.265 2 divided by p now when we refer the code guideline then code in uh, this clause number 39.4.1 say that this ratio should be greater than or equal to this formula that means a g a c etc so they have their own uh, terminology gross area concrete area characteristic compressive strength of concrete and uh, correct strength of the steel so gross area we have already calculated that is based on the uh, overall diameter of the cross section and uh, concrete area you can calculate by uh, subtracting the area of steel from the gross area so by putting the information in this equation ultimately you are getting this value equal to 0 0.0090 and uh, we can compare these two so you can easily work out what is the pitch so by putting the information that means this should be greater than or equal to this so this information we have just put here so we are getting this equation so ultimately what we are getting that pitch should be less than or equal to 29.46 so this is the requirement based on the dimensions of the column or whatever the area of reinforcement we have decided so now we have to finally decide what should be the pitch of the reinforcement now to decide the pitch what should be the minimum pitch so conditions what are specified in clause number 26.5.3.2 part d so first condition is uh, what the pitch must be less than 29.46 which we have already calculated in the previous steps now maximum pitch how code is suggesting what should be the maximum pitch so one condition is 75 and second condition is core diameter by 6 the core diameter we have calculated 420 so 420 by 6 is 70 millimeter and uh, Condition regarding the minimum spacing or minimum pitch, you can say first condition is 25 and uh, second condition is 3 times the diameter of the helical bar that is 18. So, what code is saying? Code is saying that minimum spacing should not be lesser than any of these. Should not be lesser than any of these, that it should be greater than 25 or it should be greater than 25 or at least equal to 25. It should not be lesser. So, based on this, both the conditions and uh, this condition ultimately what we require we have to decide pitch in, a sense, in such a sense in such a way that it should be lesser than 29 and it should be lesser than 75 lesser than 70 greater than 18 or greater than or equal to 25 so ultimately if we take the pitch 25 mm center to center then it will be falling or it will be obeying all the three conditions so it is less than 29 it is less than 75 less than 70 equal to 25 and uh, greater than 18 so ultimately we have decided that we will be providing helical reinforcement in the form of helix or spiral having the bar diameter 6 mm and uh, at a center to center spacing that is pitch of 25 uh, mm center to center now last uh, but uh, very important uh, aspect or step of any design problem is we have to show the reinforcement detailing. So first of all, all dimensions are in millimeter. 
main diameter which we are providing that is eight number of bars of 32 mm dia and the helical reinforcement which we are providing 6 mm dia at 25 mm center to center pitch so reinforcement detail of circular spiral column so first of all let us understand uh, its cross section area how it will uh, this is the sectional view you can say so this is the overall diameter of the uh, cross section of the circular circular type of column that is 500 millimeter and here we have provided eight number of bars symmetric to the circumference of the column that are eight number bar of 32 mm dia and uh, this spiral which we have provided that is 6 mm, mm dia at 25 mm center to center now we can uh, see the longitudinal view also so here longitudinal view is very clearly you can uh, see that uh, these are the black color bars are the main steel and uh, this red color uh, spiral or uh, a helix which you can see easily so that is the spiral type of a transverse reinforcement having pitch distance 25 mm from center to center so now here you have to keep in mind also that uh, whatever the drawing we have drawn here that is not as per scale it is only for the representation purpose and uh, when you have need to draw as per scale then you can use any software that is just like AutoCAD or any type of a another software which can be more helpful in drawing making the drawings in more detail thank you